So when I first came out of uh, high school, uh, I was really into both music and science, but I had to make a decision about which direction I wanted to go. So I decided to try the music for a while. But eventually, you know, I wanted to settle down, have a family, and I came back to, to science, and that's where I am today. Broadly speaking, we do experimental evolution in here, where we attempt to test various theories of, of evolution using microbes as a model. And microbes are ideal for this because they have very large population sizes and they grow very, very fast. So whereas it would take dozens of years to get a hundred generations from animals, say, uh, we can get the same, uh, the same number of generations from bacteria in a couple of weeks. When I was a, a teenager, I, I was really into heavy metal and, and that kind of stuff. And of course, we all wear the, the band t-shirts and, and we, we look kind of the same, I guess, with the hair and all this. Uh, and, and my experience with heavy metal fans has been that they, they gravitate together and when they're teenagers they all start bands. Like everybody you see at a heavy metal show is either in a band currently or has been in a band in the past. In the past. And, so, and so it was the same with me. Uh, me and a handful of friends got some cheap instruments and started learning how to play them, started writing songs. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people do that for fun for a while, and some people take it more seriously. And I, I took it more seriously and, and played in a number of bands throughout my 20s. So first of all, um, being an independent musician kind of, I think, pre-adapts you for what you're going to have to do as a scientist, right? Because for both of these things, there's really nobody standing over your shoulder making you work. And also for both of them, you have to work very, very hard <laughs> to get anywhere. So, you know, if you can make it even a little bit as an, in, as an independent musician, you know, you're, you're used to, to driving yourself to get up and work really hard every day out of love for what you do. And that's what you, that's, that is absolutely the number one trait you have to have to be a successful scientist. Um, but the other thing is that these are both really creative processes. I mean, they're, they're both like discovery in a way, right? So there's this technical element to science and music that you have to master before you can get anywhere. Um, there's also this creative uh, side of it, where you have to take bits and pieces of things that you've learned elsewhere and, to be successful, recombine them into a, a new thing uh, that's of interest. Um, so when you're a musician, you know, you, you, you do that one way, but when you're a scientist, you do it another. And it, and it really it satisfies the same, um, the same sort of desires.